Hello, my name is Monica Riccelli and I am WebLogic Server Product Manager. I want to present to you today WebLogic Server 1212 and its integration to the database 12C. Through this integration to the database, we can offer our users availability, multi-tenancy, scalability, and load balancing of services. WebLogic Server applications now will run continuously using application continuity. We provide multi-tenancy at both the middle and database tiers. We scale using database resident connection pooling. And we have global load balancing and failover of services with global data services. Application Continuity WebLogic Server leverages this feature to provide high availability to our applications. This feature automatically will replay database operations upon a recoverable error. Both the replay and the failure are transparent to the application. In Database 12.1, this feature supports read and write operations in a local transaction but there is no XA support in database 12.1. The benefits of this feature are better end user experience. How does it work in WebLogic? You would have to configure an active grid link or generic data source and you do need the 12C JDBC driver. It leverages JDBC replay. You enable it by using the replay driver class. When you're configuring your WebLogic server data source, there's a drop down and you would select the Oracle Thin driver that supports application continuity. When the connection is taken from the pool, a begin will be called. Database calls are remembered through the commit in the database and when the connection is put back into the pool we call end. On failure the invalid database session is replaced either by a new one or by an existing one. If there is any initialization callback registered by the application it is called at this time to restore the application state on the new session. After the callback completes all DB operations are replayed. This is completely transparent to the application. Let me call your attention to this figure. A WebLogic server application makes a request down to the database. In this case it's a rack cluster. If the rack node comes down and produces a failure, a fan event is sent up to the data source. If there is an initialization callback registered by the application. At that time the database will call that initialization callback to restore the state to the new session. If the failure is recoverable and replay is safe to run, all database operations will be replayed. By the time the response comes to the application it will have no knowledge of any failure and any database operation will be replayed safely. I'll demonstrate to you application continuity with WebLogic Server. First I want to show you how simple it is to configure a WebLogic Server data source to do application continuity. I'll name my data source OTrade Replay. And then it, it is as simple as selecting the correct database driver from this drop down. So I choose a one that has application continuity. It supports global transactions and one phase. I will enter my individual listener information. 
my service name. Configure my host and port. My database user. Password. Re-enter the password. I now will test my two listeners. Test is successful. I will not enter the ONS information since in database 12C, ONS is auto-configurable. I will deploy my data source to my admin server. Now I want to show you the difference between a driver class name on a data source that has application continuity enabled and one that does not. This is the data source we just created with application continuity enabled. You can see the, see the driver class name has replay. This is a data source that does not have application continuity enabled. You can see the class name is a simple class name. Now let me run the demo for you. This is a WebLogic server application. Here I have entered my data source that does not have application continuity enabled. Let me query the customer history table. As you can see, it has 14 records. I will query my table and retrieve the first two records from my results set. I will kill the database session, creating a failure, and attempt to retrieve the next two records from my results set. As you can see here, an exception was thrown to the application due to this error, which did not allow me to retrieve the next two records from my results set. Now I will begin my local transaction and insert a record into the history table and yet another record. I kill my database session producing a failure and attempt to do an insert again. As you can see, the application got an exception. When I query my history table, the two rows that I had inserted are not here because the local transaction was rolled back due to the exception. This is the same WebLogic server application, but now I will use the data source that does have application continuity enabled. Let's query the history table. I have 14 rows. Now I will do my query and retrieve the first two records from my results set. Kill the database session to produce a failure and attempt to retrieve the next two records from my results set. As you can see here, because of application continuity, the application did not receive any exceptions and the query was replayed, which allowed me to retrieve the next two records from my result set. I close my result set. Let me query the table again. See that I have only 14 records in this table. Now I will do my inserts. I begin my local transaction at a record, at a second record. Now I will kill my database session to produce a failure. I will attempt to insert again into the table, and I will insert another record, and I will commit my local transaction. Because application continuity is enabled, 
This application did not receive any exceptions when I killed the database session, and all the inserts were replayed, and the commit succeeded. If we query my history table now, you will see that the four inserts were applied to the table and that the insert operations replayed successfully. WebLogic integration with pluggable databases. This feature provides increased density, scalability, and multi-tenancy. A pluggable database is one of many virtual databases hosted on a single container database. It provides tenant isolation, each PDB is a tenant, while leveraging the benefits of a single database. This provides better efficiency, unified security management, and simplified upgrade. The last two are benefits mainly to database administrators. One implementation in WebLogic Server with pluggable databases is dynamic switching across pluggable databases. You would configure a single data source and pull connections to all tenant databases and switch between those pluggable databases. The user would write a connection label callback handler, which among other things will call set container to switch between tenants. This implementation provides better use of resources, both at the middle tier, because you have a single data source, and at the data tier, because you have a single container database. In database 12.1, there are some limitations to this implementation of PDB switching. FAN is not supported still benefits of using active grid link as a single data source are there drcp application continuity proxy authentication and recovery of x8 transactions are not supported please refer to the documentation link to retrieve more information about these limitations another implementation is one data source per pdb tenant in WebLogic Server, each PDB is a single database. In WebLogic, you will configure a single data source per PDB. The benefits of this implementation are multi-tenancy support. Resource benefits are recognized at the data tier level. Database resident connection pooling. This feature improves database resource utilization. Database sessions are pooled at the database. It improves performance by pooling database sessions for a large number of WebLogic server connections. This feature is most applicable when database sessions are not always used. Middle tier scaling challenge. Application servers hold connections even when they are not in use. There's a fixed capacity of connections or sessions. If there is an increased demand on the mid-tier of resources, this might require an increase of database resources. Scaling with DRCP. With DRCP, if there is increased demand at the middle tier, sessions are pooled at the database level, allowing a more efficient use of these resources. How does it work in WebLogic? DRCP must be enabled on the database. Generic and grid-linked data sources need to be configured, and it does require database and driver 12C. You enable with a data source connection property and URL. The DRCP connection class, you can specify a group or subgroup of sessions this is normally used to obtain statistics of session usage. Pool connections in WebLogic are unattached. When the connection is given to the application, attached connection is called. When the connection is returned to the pool, detached connection is called. 
This is how a configuration of DRCP looks in the WebLogic Server Console. You would specify a URL and an Oracle JDBC DRCP connection class. Global Load Balancing of Services GDS, or Global Data Services, feature provides service availability in the database cloud. A global service is a service that is available in the database cloud across regions. The global data service allows runtime load balancing and failover of these global services. When there is heavy load and a global service is available in another region of the database cloud, the GDS framework will notify through a fan event to Active Grid Link and a new connection will be made to the less loaded service. When there is a database failure, the GDS framework will notify uh, Active Grid Link through a fan event that the service is available and a new connection is made to the surviving service. WebLogic server applications do not need to be restarted on failure. This provides business continuity. We have certified the database 12C features with earlier versions of WebLogic Server. This matrix shows the necessary components and versions to utilize these features. As you can see, these features are all available with WebLogic Server 12.1.2. I have included here some links to more resources where you can read about these features and the integration to a logic server. Thank you.